In this video, I'm going to show you how to start drawing your foundation. Again, this is a monolithic slab foundation, uh, meaning it's all poured together in one pour. So, um, and that uh, is important when it comes to drawing it because you're not going to draw different seams and things like that. But anyway, what I want to do is kind of position myself on the paper. Um, you want to be, you don't want to draw on your border or you don't want to draw too close to your border either. Um, but for this foundation, if you look on the wall, you can actually see some of the foundations and I kind of start on the bottom left side when I'm doing the foundation. And um, I come out about an inch and a half. And if you need to visualize that, you know, something, you know, like uh, right around in here or even maybe a little higher to start my drawing, okay? Don't want to draw on your borders and you also want to leave room for any kind of annotations that you're going to need later um, now just remember we are using the three inch scale i'm going to try to zoom this in just a little bit here okay we're using the uh, three inch scale right there okay now a lot of this stuff is going to be really hard to see on the video um, i do try to zoom in when i'm editing the video but uh, the, f the further the left side of my foundation, that's my stem wall. I'm going to draw that at 18 inches, and I'm just going to mark it with the ruler. So I'm going to find the 6-inch mark, and I'm going to come down just a little bit. Okay, so the 6-inch mark on my regular 12-inch, or not my regular 12-inch ruler, but the 12-inch portion of the 3-inch scale ruler. And I'm just going to put a dot right there at 6 and then I'm gonna go up and put a dot at one foot. Okay, right there. So one foot, which is 12 inches, plus six is a total of 18 inches. So there's my 18 inch height for the side of my foundation. Uh, this would actually be the stem wall. So to make sure I get a straight vertical line, I use my triangle. I don't draw with the scale, I draw with my triangle. So starting at that first mark that I made and then drawing up to the second mark, okay? Now, of course, you see my line doesn't quite hit the mark. That's okay because that those marks aren't vertical, um, but the triangle is. And remember, too, I'm going to point this out, and you really need to do this, is um, when you're first drawing, when you're starting your drawing, you need to use light lines. You will make mistakes, you will have to erase. And if you draw with heavy lines, they're much harder to erase. You end up smearing things all over your paper, and then of course you have lines that weren't able to be completely erased. Uh, erased. As I'm drawing this on the video, of course, I'm gonna use darker lines uh, because I need you to be able to see it, all right? Now, the next thing I'm going to I'm going to draw is just the top surface of my foundation. Um, this was my 18-inch mark right here from down here, so I'm going to draw right along that. Okay, and if by any means things look crooked on this video, just understand that um, you know there is a little distortion because I'm using a camera, a wide-angle camera. Sometimes I can clean it up just a little bit. So now we got the top surface of our slab in foundation. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll draw the footing, which is going to go across the bottom. Now this is determined by an engineer. Uh, here we're going to do it in um, an eight-inch footing. So I need to find my three-inch scale again, and we're just going to draw eight inches. So I'm going to use the ruler portion of the three-inch scale. And eight inches is right here, right in front of the nine. So I'm just gonna place a mark right there, bring up my parallel bar, draw from that edge to where that mark is, okay? Next thing I'll do is I'll draw a 45 degree angle going up to meet the slab. And I'm gonna use my 45 degree triangle. Draw it up. And I don't know exactly where it's going to go yet, okay, but I'm going to stop right there because the thickness of my slab 
and the intersection I create with this bottom of the slab line is going to tell me where that is supposed to meet. All right, so again, with a three inch scale, and I want to make my slab thickness, um, the minimum is six inches. And uh, of course, typically it's going to be a little bit more than that anyway. Uh, so you can, let's see if eight inches will fit into our drawing. And I think it will. But let's actually do six inches. I'm going to do six inches because that means that there's less shading that we have to do later. Okay, and I'm just going to draw to that intersection right there. Now that's the bottom of my slab. Now, find your eraser and, you know, you can erase this excess line that you don't need. Okay, now the distance that I drew, and also use a brush to brush away your uh, eraser bits because your hands will cause it to smear. You have natural oils in your fingers. And of course, if you blow it, which I do that by habit sometimes, you'll end up blowing uh, saliva on your paper. All right, so, and now these lines, when I drew those, I didn't draw them any particular distance because the slab will actually continue way over here off the paper. There's a way that I treat this end, however, to uh, tell the person looking at it that, hey, this ends right here. Okay, so we have the, the main part of the slab and the foundation. Next thing we wanna do is we're gonna put a wall, just a little piece of a wall right over here to show the people reading the, the uh, plan that, or, or the type of wall that we're, we're putting up, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring, um, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna have to put a seal, okay? Remember from your vocabulary words, we have a seal we're gonna place right here, that bottom plate for the wall. Put it right on the edge and with a three inch scale, I'm going to draw this two by four, which is basically gonna be laying on the, on the concrete right here, and it's gonna extend away from you. And of course, we know a two by four because the letter, the numbers two and four stand for two, two inches by four inches, but the two by four piece of lumber is really not that size. Okay, the uh, two by four is just a nominal, which means name only, um, and uh, the, uh, actual uh, height of that, the actual measurement is one and a half inches by um, three and a half inches. So I'm going to measure one and a half inches up. So we've got one and then a half. That's the top of the two by four, and it's going to be laying flat across here. And I'm going to measure three and a half. So one, two, three, and one half. Okay, now I'm going to kind of draw that out, start out with some light lines, and then once I get my intersections, I'll know what I'm working with. And uh, there's all kinds of shortcuts in doing this. I should have drawn both my vertical lines at the same time. All right, so there is my 2 by 4 and that is a, uh, what we call a sill. And we'll label that later so we'll learn the parts. And this cross that I'm drawing through the end of the piece of lumber is just telling me this is the cut end of the piece of lumber. Okay, that is the cut end of a piece of lumber. This lumber, this seal, is actually made of, uh, or it's made from wood, of course, but it's uh, pressure treated. And it's pressure treated to uh, prevent insect invasion. All right, now you probably notice there's something a little bit different. Um, I put a stud right here above the uh, seal, the bottom seal, the seal plate. And I also added what's called a J-bolt. This is what bolts the uh, wall to the concrete, okay? And once, you know, once the concrete hardens, of course this bolt is put in when it's wet. Once it hardens, it's just exposed through the top. Um, you put the wall on top of it and then bolt it down with this little bolt right here. So this is all how we indicate that. Uh, typically the bolt's about a three eighths to a quarter of an inch. You don't have to draw it specifically to those measurements, um, but you do have to draw it to its proper depth, which I don't have the proper depth on here. Um, 
at the moment, which I can just annotate that depth. Um, the only reason I didn't draw it is because I can't remember off the top of my head what that depth is, but I will look that up for you. Um, and uh, from here, what we have to do, let's see, what do we need to do next? We need to draw our uh, compacted gravel and compacted sand. Um, that's gonna be underneath right here. Somewhere under here is just gonna be raw earth. But uh, they apply sometimes just sand, sometimes just a, uh, a gravel, more like a crushed gravel. And they compact it mechanically with machines to get it a really firm surface to place your slab on. Uh, sometimes you'll see both compacted gravel and sand. Um, but let's do, let's do both. And there is a specific uh, depth that that should be, and that is always determined by the engineer on the job. And that's based on the soil conditions. So uh, I'm just going to put a two inch depth to each one of them. So using the three inch scale, like we did before, one, two, so I'll put the two inch mark right there on the line, and then I come down to the t or 12 inch mark. No, I said two inch mark, that's actually the 10 inch mark. And come down and make that mark at the, at the 12 inch line. Then I place that same 10 inch line on that mark, come down another two inches to represent my other material. And then of course below that, it's just gonna be earth. All right, and now all I have to do is just complete that, complete these different layers. And there we go. And of course we'll come back and, and label all this so we know exactly what everything is. Now line treatments over here because I'm ending uh, my drawing, but my drawing really does continue further on that way. Um, there's a special way that I treat the end of this. It's uh, called a break line. And I'm, I'm going to draw a straight line, no specific distance. I just want to come a little above the object that I'm breaking and then go a little bit below the object that I'm breaking. And to clean it up, you'll want to erase these lines that are sticking out there. Okay, and then you'll take your 45 degree uh, um, triangle, just put a little hash mark right through there, come down, and just maybe one more hash mark will be sufficient. We'll put it right through this intersection. Take your parallel bar and draw a horizontal line from that end to the edge and then from the outer end to the edge. Same thing up here from the end of the hash to the edge, and then from the end of this hash into the edge. And you take your eraser and erase the line that extends between that Z. Use your brush, get rid of the eraser marks. And that tells me that it's been cut off right there and that there's actually more that extends this way. Do the same thing up here with this uh, two by four and just draw a line that extends that way. And then right in the middle of that two by four, just draw that 45 degree hash. And then connect the ends together like so, make a Z. And then you're right and there you go. Okay, so that is how you put all of that together. Next, I'm going to look at dimensioning. Okay, dimensioning, uh, dimension line is a line that extends the, ex the length of what it is that you're measuring. Um, there are extension lines which extend out from the object to the dimension line to kind of mark the furthest extents of, to tell you what you're actually measuring. Um, and there's also some termination marks that we put on to terminate uh, the dimension line, and I'll show you that. It's probably all confusing to you right now. But first thing I'll do, um, I'm thinking about the, the measurements that are important in this drawing. And one line I forgot to put is there's this six inch line that we need to use to indicate the grade level. Grade level is the level of the natural ground. So I set my three, three inch scale ruler 
on the 6th, and then, I, of course, I mark down here at the 12th. That gives me 6 inches. So this line is actually going to represent the natural grade, or the dirt, the ground. All right, now as far as dimensioning this, what I need to do first, um, I'm going to dimension this 6 inches, and then this I'm going to measure, which is 12 inches, and I'm going to dimension that. So 12 and 6 makes 18, the total height of our stem wall. And I'm going to use what's called a continual dimension. Um, it's just going to continue right down through there and then have the data for both of those measurements on those lines. So the first thing I'll do is I need to do, put down some uh, extension lines. So I come and I get about an, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch away from the object before I start drawing the extension line. Okay, and you can actually see a little gap right there. I'll zoom into it later when I'm editing. So you can see that. And then down at the very bottom, there's also another extension line, again, extending from the object and then drawing out in that direction. And what I do with that is I'll place one line, a dimension line. That dimension line needs to be a quarter of an inch, or we'll use that uh, in this case. We'll use a quarter of an inch away from the object, and that will be our dimension line. Okay, so on this continual dimension, because um, I'm having actually two dimensions right there, I'm going to put these termination line right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go down and put termination lines at the end, and I'm going to put a termination line at the, the top. And I forgot to leave an empty gap in here to put my number. So a little erase a gap right out of that. And then come in here and erase out of here about the middle. Um, the closer to the middle, the better. All right. And that's where we'll put our number to tell how long it is. And I use a graphing ruler. You can actually use a regular 16 or 12 inch ruler. Um, but you want your letter heights, the number that I'm going to put in here, to be one eighth of an inch exactly so i'm going to line up you know just any measurement to the line and then one sixteenth on either side of that line i'm going to place two marks those two marks will be guidelines construction lines in this case for the lettering and i'm going to draw very very light lines because all i need to do is see it so i'll know how big to place my letters. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna place my, my very best ever number six for six inches. And then here, I'm gonna place my very best number 12. Handwriting is important, and that's inches. Okay, and later you can come back and erase the guidelines that you put down there. But this says this is 12 inches from here to here, and then this says it's six inches from here to here. Now, you go through and you dimension, pay attention, the things that you're gonna dimension, you're gonna dimension this stem wall. You're also gonna dimension the length of your footing. You're gonna dimension the thickness of your slab, and then the thickness of each one of these layers. I'll show you how to do that real quick, because we're gonna use a continual on that as well. So I'm gonna go right through here, maybe just a little bit past um, the, uh, the actual lines down at the bottom and the top. Same thing, put a slash mark through the different spaces that are gonna receive a numerical measurement. And as I forgot again, okay, I wanna erase a gap right in there here, here. This one will say six inches to represent the thickness of the slab. This one will say two inches to represent the thickness of my gravel. This one will say two inches representing the thickness of my sand, my compacted sand and my compacted gravel. So those are the things that you must dimension on this. Um, and uh, that would really be it. So, um, carry on and do that on your own. You don't have to watch me do all of that. And then uh, let me know if you have any questions or concerns.